The topic of today's webinar is how to benchmark your data center operations maturity. But first, uh, let me thank you all for being here. Um, we sincerely appreciate the valuable time you have taken from your busy schedule to join us. Today, uh, our speaker is going to share many interesting information within a very short time. Information that will help you protect your company or your customers from potential hidden risks, including steps you can implement immediately after this webinar. If it's okay with you, I would like to take two minutes to introduce the speaker today, Edward Van Lind. Edward is the chairman and CEO of the EPI Group of Companies. He possesses 35 years of experience in the high-tech mission critical industry. And in fact, Edward is the person who grew EPI from a single office organization to a multinational company today with global reach and serving customers from all over the world. Um, he's a dynamic leader who is highly respected and well-liked with very extensive technical and operational knowledge. In fact, uh, Edward has personally worked with hundreds of customers directly in the early days. And now though he's busy uh, running the company, he still takes time from his busy CEO schedule to oversee the more complex customer projects. Edward sits on various data center professional groups and standards committee. In fact, there's no better person I can think of to present on this topic uh, that, uh, today. Yeah. I would urge you to take this opportunity to tap on his 35 years of experience and ask questions. You can type your questions into the Q&A section or raise your hand. And also for your information, this uh, webinar is recorded for sharing later. And at this time, you're probably thinking I should stop talking because you're here to listen to Edward. So I will hand it over to Edward now. Well, uh, thank you very much, Faith, for this uh, introduction. Uh, slightly blushing at the moment now. So uh, again, everybody, uh, very much welcome. And uh, what we would like today uh, to discuss is uh, how to benchmark your data center operations maturity. So a couple of things that we will go through today. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about EPI, just for those uh, first ones that might not uh, know about us yet. Uh, we'll talk some of the industry challenges that data center operator owners face. We'll talk a bit about the uh, various maturity levels uh, to which you can uh, benchmark yourself. Uh, and we'll talk about, you know, the operational standards. Uh, we're going a little bit, uh, giving you a bit of hints of how you could uh, do some initial assessment uh, yourself. And then, of course, uh, I think it would be nice to, for you to see uh, some business case study that we have done. And obviously, we'll close the topic with uh, a summary and the usual questions and answers. So just a very brief one about EPI, uh, originally started in the UK in 1987, so we are celebrating our 35th anniversary this year, and we'll come out with some uh, nice uh, promotions and all that stuff, so watch this space and your email, uh, because there will be some uh, nice events and things that we're going to organize uh, for that. Um, as I said, uh, originally out of the UK, but we moved the headquarters to uh, Singapore in uh, the 1999. And from there, we basically started expanding all over the world with currently 11 offices in various time zones, uh, covering the whole globe and running through a, a large global partner network. So we are having our service capabilities in about 60 plus countries. Uh, so there's always somebody close to your home, so to speak. Very much data center focused from the day that we were incorporated uh, up till today. We're delivering primarily three types of services. We do design validation. This is aimed at those who are embarking on the data center design and build project, where they would like their design to be vetted before the actual construction starts, or in some cases where customers have a renovation uh, going on of their data center, and they would like to make sure that before that is being done, that everything is according to standards or design principles and the usual benchmark there. We also do auditing and certification of data centers. We do that again at the facility level. Um, and we also do it at the operations and governance and maintenance level. So two portions, uh, the, the, the human aspect, so to speak, as well as the physical implementation. And we also have a large uh, range of training and certification programs for data center and IT professionals that want to grow you know, their skills and competences. So that was just very briefly on, on EPI. So let's have a look at some of the industry challenges and risks. Um, for those of you working in the industry, uh, maybe very short or maybe already for many, many years, 
you know that data centers are very complex. And it typically starts with the physical construction of a data center and all the things that you need to think about, whether it's electrical, mechanical systems, physical security, fire safety, et cetera, et cetera. And we know that we need to strike a careful balance and to optimize the money that we spend on the data center, providing us with you know, the highest level availability that hopefully meets or exceeds the business requirements. So this is you know, quite a complex undertaking. But apart from the design and build which you uh, by right do, for example, once uh, on your site, then we go into the operations. And that is where uh, for most data center operator owners uh, the biggest headache is. Because we very often see customers being confused in terms of you know, what are the processes that we need? What are the core processes that we definitely need to have? What are some of the side processes? To what level of detail do we need to actually describe those processes? Uh, we all know that if processes are too detailed in description, people try or tend to ignore them. If they are too high level, we might miss out, you know, some check and balances to have proper management control over those processes. And, and how do you control that? What kind of mechanisms do you put in? Uh, again, too much control and checks will also lead to frustration. Too little might put you at a certain level of risk. So this is a quite delicate uh, decision that you need to make. And of course, automation. Yeah, especially now when everybody talks about AI and, and supported assistance, uh, you know, the whole mechanism around automation is there. But what do we automate? Yeah, what can we automate? What level of control are we willing to give away to uh, machines, so to speak, that make decisions potentially for us? And then we have the good old battles internally. Yeah, the, the business, the IT, and the data set uh, facility yeah, might have different views or different uh, you know, uh, guidelines to which they operate and as well as different priority. So all that stuff, we need to make sure that is well balanced and ideally we need to use something of the best practices or standards that are already in place and that we potentially could reference. And also there is, you know, quite a bit of confusion in the market. So all in all, a lot of risk. Yeah, you might have the nicest building in the world and you might have a great team, but if the things are not properly under management control, then it's not a well-oiled machine, so to speak, then you still could have a great risk. And sometimes those risks are very much hidden. And we all know that you know, those things are not desirable because if we have you know, downtime in our uh, IT and application environment, maybe because of data center related matters, there is a lot of issues that we will get to face. You know, we get to deal with lost sales potentially and lost productivity. We might even have to pay penalties. We might lose data. And not to forget, we might be in the newspaper in a not too great daylight, having a big impact on our brand and reputation around you know, the customer base that we serve and even future customers. So what is the typical you know, issue in data centers? Why do data centers go down? Now, there is a variety of research in the market, and we've just picked out one here. Again, what you will find out in those various research that the numbers typically vary uh, you know, up and down, but it's not so much about being 100% accurate on the number because that varies per organization, but it's more to give an idea that uh, there is a portion on the mechanical failures, as we call it, uh, the typical UPSs, generators, cooling systems, and so forth. But there is also a large portion yeah, that is due to the accidents and human error. Yeah? And that is where you know, we need to put good focus on. So what are some of the causes of those human errors? Well, uh, it could be the traditional oopsies, right? Uh, we push the wrong button at the wrong time. Uh, it could be that the processes are not well described. Again, over-engineered or under-engineered processes. They might not have the right level of maturity based on, on the business or on the capabilities of the team. Uh, integration, always a big, big problem in many, many organizations. Uh, and of course, uh, as I said, the good old oopsies that we do. But the good news about human error is that is predictable. I think if you will sit down and write all the potential mistakes uh, or issues that we might have in our data center, what could go wrong? Uh, I'm sure you can come up with a huge list uh, of all the potential risk areas and then start describing what you could do about it. Uh, maybe train people better, maybe put better processes in place, automate it, et cetera, et cetera. So there are many, many things we could potentially do to you know, minimize or maybe even take away some of the risks due to human error. 
But again, it's a complex task and definitely not an easy one. But it is important. And I, you know, for those who uh, know me, I'm a big uh, air, uh, you know, uh, and flight uh, type of fan, um, and traveling around the world on, the, on, you know, various continents. And I always make a lot of relationship between the data center and the airline industry. And I thought this is a nice picture to show you the, uh, say, uh, issues in the airline industry. And I've just taken out two years here, 2009 to 2014 where you look at, say, the number of flights that have increased, but you can see here that the number of accidents, uh, and you have total accidents and fatal accidents, fatal accidents obviously is when human uh, uh, are involved. Uh, you can see that despite the number of flights and passengers that were increasing tremendously over that period, the number of accidents and fatal accidents actually went down. Now, why is that? It's process. The airline industry is very, very rigid and very, very good at processes. No matter how often the same pilot has basically flown the same plane between the same locations, they still go rigorously through this checklist one by one by one, and they always are double checked, uh, you know, between the captain and the first officer, etc. And this is one of the reasons why there are, you know, relatively speaking, so little mistakes happening in that industry. But yeah, it's not about, you know, all those individual parts. Now, here you see a few pictures related to uh, when you step on the flight, all the way from baggage handling, uh, ground control, uh, ATC, the air traffic control, uh, loading of the, uh, the cargo, and of course, having a nice airplane and top-notch service. Now, you can have all those services, you know, individually fantastically organized, but what if they are not integrated? Yeah, and here you can see a few examples where, for example, on the picture on the left of this chart, where a you know cargo unit was literally sucked into an, uh, an engine purely because ground control was already giving the freebie to uh, fire off the engines where the cargo uh, people handling at the floor of the of the tarmac uh, had not cleared everything. And you know the other pictures will speak for itself as well. So individually services, yeah, is not good enough. You need to have proper integration to make it all work. Uh, beautifully. Now let's relate it to the industry, uh, our industry, the data center industry. Here you see, for example, a simple picture where we have a nice generator, we have a UPS, and we have our mission critical data center, right? All those aspects might work individually very well, but let's say that there is no coordination between those who, for example, execute maintenance on the generator and the UPS. Let's say that they do that all at the same time, whilst you in IT are running the quarterly reporting. Yeah, it's not hard to imagine uh, the mistakes that potentially could happen and, you know, the result of it. But yeah, we are living in this uh, data center industry where we don't like change. We are very risk averse. We try to keep doing the same thing over and over again. And that is what I always call the uh, white change syndrome that we are stuck with in many cases in the industry. We need to do something about it. Well, how do you know whether you do a good job then, right? Because if you do the same thing over and over again, you think you're doing a great job, then well, you would like to benchmark yourself, of course, against others to see how well they are doing compared to you or the other way around. Uh, and that is, of course, where we come up with this five levels of benchmarking to which you as a data center operator owner potentially could measure yourself against. So what are those five levels? Well, there is in the industry, if you look at ISO, uh, the numbers are listed here below. And for those of you in the software development, you're probably familiar with uh, the CMMI model, where we're talking about five levels of operations or uh, maturity, I should say, process maturity, uh, level one till level five. Now, level one, if you are a data center running at this level, that typically means you have very little or even no documentation. Uh, you might not do proper monitoring. The training is all a bit ad hoc left and right, and the processors are really, really not uh, controlled. Maybe in the DCUS2, uh, that is what we call a repeatable process. Uh, in the end of the day, there might be uh, you know, processes well executed, maybe not fully documented. Now, in itself, that means that you have a very high reliance on, on the people that might do a great job. But as an organization, of course, you need to be always looking at risk management. 
So what if that particular person is suddenly not available, either they leave the organization or they just, you know, have an unfortunate event that they will be unavailable for a time. How do you handle those circumstances? Then we go to what we call level three. This is where we have standardized ourselves. We have well-documented uh, procedures in the organization. So we are less reliant on people from the point of that is not in their head. Yeah, don't be alarmed. Uh, we still need, of course, uh, uh, people to do the execution of all those uh, processes, but it's easier uh, for people to be, uh, you know, backing up to each other, etc. In, in terms of holidays and all the other events. Then we go to level four. Now what we are doing, we having all those processes, we executing them very well, we measure them uh, in terms of the output and the control, and we're looking at you know, how can we improve them over time because. Again, uh, the change management, uh, as I said, we need to improve ourselves continuously. And ideally, uh, remember the airplane pictures, we would like all the individual processes that we have running around our data center and IT operations uh, to be well integrated. So we truly work as a well-oiled machine as an organization. Yeah, and that is what uh, we, uh, as a CEO, uh, that is what we would like to see, right? We would like to see all the departments working flawlessly uh, and uh, together and communicate well. Now, I know that many of you say, well, that's all nice and beautiful, but you know, there are a lot of ISO standards, right? ISO 9000, uh, 27001, et cetera, et cetera. And many data center operator owners are using the ISO standards. Nothing wrong with that, but there are some risks and some challenges there. First of all, uh, we see that the ISO standards are pretty generic they were not specifically written around a data center environment. Therefore, uh, we have still some gaps left and right. There might not be a proper integration with our uh, specific data center environment. The other thing that we see in ISO that sometimes is a bit abracadabra what we are reading. Huh? You're reading a statement, thou shall protect the parameter. What do you mean, thou shall protect the parameter? Does it mean I need to put 20 people around my building with, a, with an M16 gun or do I uh, put electronic measures in place or what, what is adequate, right? What is enough? What is too little? And that could be quite challenging for organizations. So that's why typically when you implement ISO, you start hiring consultants. And as you know, consultants have all their own opinions. And that opinion might even vary from the auditor, who is the person that ultimately will put a chop and says you are compliant. Uh, so this is quite a tricky part. The other problem that I always find with uh, the ISO implementation for data centers, that is really an all or nothing game, right? There is no uh, respect you know, for the various level of maturity uh, or requirements that organizations have. It's kind of like you do it all or you're not. It's, it's really a pass fail option. And that is a bit of a trouble. That also leads to the issue that when you have this all or nothing type of standard, you as a business cannot decide what is your priority. You cannot say, well, this is a bit more important than the other one, and this is where I want to put my resources in, because in the ISO standard, it doesn't leave you that choice. It's kind of like you do everything from page one till the last page, so to speak. So what would be another option is that is the DCOS, the Data Center Operations Standard. The beauty about this particular document is that it's written specifically for data centers. It honors and it has taken a lot of guidance also from the variety of ISO standards that you typically find in the market uh, deployed in the data center. And it has the, the maturity levels built in. So that gives, of course, a great advantage uh, when applying this particular standard. It doesn't conflict with ISO. Uh, it could be uh, you know, aligned with it. Uh, you could have ISO already implement DCS or the other way around and still enjoy things like maturity levels. So what is in the DCS? Well, when we started developing the DCS, the first thing we looked at is say, what are all the primary functions within a data center? Uh, we have, of course, the infrastructure itself. Uh, the good old uh, electrical, mechanical, and telecoms infrastructure. And then we have all those services around it to make the data center be able to deliver, you know, the IT services and application services to its customer. So what we said, we said, okay, we take all those services. And the first thing we want to do is make sure that it's a very practical document that gives the operator owners 
the ability to slowly implement it. We don't want the big bang. We want to have a progressive approach, as we call it, uh, for implementing and growing the scope and maturity of the organization. It's all about risk reduction yeah, and making sure your organization yeah, is better aligned with regulatory and business compliance, especially for certain industries. So it's a really nice framework for you to tap on and basically you know, minimize the risk. Well, it is a standard and it's, you know, as I said, very practical. Uh, it was written you know, by people that do data center operations on a daily basis for a variety of organizations uh, in various countries around the world. Um, and it's basically, you know, as I said, uh, well aligned with the data center environment and, and ISO where applicable. And it's you know, well endorsed you know, around the globe by a variety of organizations that have provided their input also to develop this particular standard. So just a quick highlight, uh, it's, a, it's an ISO uh, NC based development cycle that we did. Uh, you know, all the criteria are available, so there's no guessing. It's very practically described, so there's no uh, you know, question marks typically about what you should do. Uh, aligned with ISO, as I said, it has the maturity level building. Yeah, there are auditors that can actually review your data center covering all those 11 or less disciplines uh, up to your choosing. Now, not going to bore you with, uh, you know, going through this whole chart, but just to show you, and again, when you get the video of this particular presentation, you can go through it uh, in a bit more detail. Uh, but this is the development cycle that we have followed, which is exactly the way NC and ISO, you know, develops a standard as well. So what is in the DCOS? Well, here you see the high level 11 domains that are addressed. Obviously, we start with service level management, a very key component, because if you don't know what services your customers, whether they are internal or external, are expecting, then the rest doesn't matter, right? You don't know what processes to put in place and to what level you need to develop them, et cetera. So we go first with service level management and then basically trickle down the rest of the organization and to put all the right processes in place. Now, in each of these domains, yeah, there are also subdomains, right? So in this particular example, we talk about service level management. Well, what is in service level management? Well, a number of subdomains. Again, I'm not going to bore you by reading them one by one. Uh, but as you all know, service management all starts with needs analysis to understand your customer. And then from there, you start developing your requirements uh, in terms of what they need from a support perspective, commercially, technically. And then you start building your organization and all the processes around it. So we have for each of those 11 domains, yeah, there is a whole range of subdomains uh, that you could look at uh, and refine your internal stuff. As I said, uh, very practical. Again, so, you know, here you can see a, a quick, uh, uh, you know, copy of a page. Uh, we don't do mysterious, you know, the descriptions. We basically tell you, you know, in very clear terms what you need to do and how you need to do it. It doesn't mean that you can't, you know, variate from this particular part. So there might be scenarios where you have another way of doing it, but still establish the intent of a particular requirement. And that will be all good, not a problem at all. We also have in the DCS a lot of checklists. So for those of you who wonder, you know, about how to maintain your generator, your UPS, etc., although it might be maintained by your uh, supplier and vendors, uh, this is a good checklist to also look at, say, what you can do from your end. As I said, progressive approach. Now, this is a very important part because we all know we're very busy in the data center industry. We can't do too many things on the site. Uh, and if we want to make improvements, then we want to do it, you know, as in time uh, and business requirements require it and resources permit them. So what you could do as a customer, you could say from those 11 domains, I pick the ones that are critical to me or where I feel I have quite a challenge. And then you can, you know, slowly review that one, implement and raise your maturity. So when we talk about progressive, there are two types of progressiveness in the DCS. That is either the scope uh, by taking one or multiple disciplines and grow them over time and the maturity level. So you could, for example, be at maturity two uh, in for, uh, 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 various domains. And then you can say, let's grow that to, for example, maturity level three or four. 
Now, what is the best one? Yeah, obviously level five, right? That is where everything works nicely together. You have full management control over all the processes within the scope. And that is obviously what we ultimately would like to achieve. But whether that's possible, that is the question. Now, when you do an audit for DCS, you will get a nice chart that shows you where you are compared to your char uh, target. So in this case, uh, the target was level three, but the customer in some areas overshot, but in quite a few areas, they undershot it. And of course, for the subdomain, so you could get a similar chart. And of course, the audit report will give you some guidance on things that you could consider uh, to improve your processes and therefore reduce your risk. So once you have that report, of course, we start working on the uh, uh, improvement plans. So we're looking at the gaps and then we start looking at, you know, who should close the gap. We put a champion in place, so to speak, and put some realistic uh, timeframes around it and make sure that you have the right amount of people to slowly implement them. And then once that is implemented, then obviously you could do a reassessment and obviously celebrate your achievements. And that could be by means of having a search on the wall and a nice uh, indicia that you can use in your communication with your customer to show that you are very serious about you know, operations. Plenty of customers have done it already uh, to various level of, uh, of maturity. So uh, you will be recognized as well. So what is the best way of, of looking at all that? Well, uh, very simple steps, right? Read the DCS first, uh, just a, a general walkthrough, then start looking at which domains you think are the most relevant for you to improve in your organization. Check uh, on the gaps, either by doing it internal or use an external organization, make some uh, action plan, celebrate success. And then over time, as you are maintaining your relevance and your compliance to DCS, uh, expand the, the scope maybe or improve maturity or just keep it at the level that you deem to be appropriate. So we told you that we would give you some guidance uh, for you to start thinking about where you are. So maybe you can think already now where you think you are with your organization. Are you at level one? Are you at level two, three, four, or maybe even at level five? Now, what I'm gonna show you are some questions and they are by, uh, by all means not, you know, uh, the whole list uh, that would be done through an audit, of course. So this is just to give you a bit of uh, food for thought, so to speak, to assess yourself. So the first question would be, do you have in your organization processes that are really person dependent? Uh, are there things that maybe yourself are very good at, uh, but you've never really written down what the process is like. So if you would leave the organization, uh, then the organization might have a risk, right? Or maybe when you are at the supervisor and management level, do you know of any processes that you know that maybe the team is executing fantastically, but you know that, you know, if that person is not available, you would be, you know, quite stressed because you have no full clue what is happening, right? No limited, oh yes. Are all your processes documented? Uh, that basically comes back a bit to the, to the previous one, but uh, is all your documentation there? Is it all there? Is it limited? Or maybe even no documentation? I hope that is not an answer that you have. Are the processes deployed? Now, you might think this is a funny question because, yeah, if you have your processes described, then it's deployed, right? Uh, don't think so. Unfortunately, we have come across situations where when we were dealing with the senior management, that they were convinced that everything was in tip-top shape because they saw those nice binders with all the descriptions and all the processes, etc. But when we went to the, the engineering level, so to speak, the staff that are dealing with day-to-day -day operations, sometimes we found that they just didn't follow the process. They thought it was over-engineered, too many checks. If we have to do all those checklists and all the stuff, we can't even do our work anymore. Forget about it, right? So sometimes there is a disconnect between what senior management is thinking is happening and what is actually really happening at the floor level. Have you checked those things? Maybe you did, maybe you didn't, maybe you did it a bit in between. Are the processes measured? Do you measure the effective outcome of your processes? Right, very important because a process is there to have management control over a particular flow, but you need to measure the effectiveness as well, right? Um, and maybe you want to tune your process, right? If you do something uh, over and over again, let's say you do a particular check and you do it, you know, 100,000 times a month, and basically the result is always it's okay. Maybe one time it is not. And even if that one time it is not, then it has no impact on the business. Well, 
maybe you have to then ask yourself the question, do we still want that check to be done? Because apparently uh, it's always going well. Even if it's not going well, there's no business impact. Maybe you should take that step out and you know, reduce the complexity of a process. Are the processes integrated? Now, that could be that some processes are integrated. It could be that, for example, you have a nice service level management process and it's very well integrated with your monitoring systems. That could be okay. But if service level management is not maybe connected to other parts of the organization, then you could still have a problem, right? And that is where the question comes in, are all your processes fully integrated? Can you think of something that is maybe not so well integrated? And it's very simple to sometimes understand it. Do you sometimes have a fight with somebody? Because typically, if you have a fight with somebody, then there is a conflict of interest. And that sometimes means that there is just no smooth integration between two departments, etc., because they might have different objectives, etc. And then as an organization, that is a challenge. Do you train your staff? And we're not talking about the induction course when somebody is coming to your organization and you tell them all the beautiful things about the organization and how you work, but do you train people on a continuous basis? If a training is ended with a, a certificate, for example, are those certificates maintained? Unfortunately, we see people sometimes walking around with you know, expired certificates. So how can we still guarantee that they are you know, up to the level that you know, the certificate indicated many years ago? Do you monitor and control the service levels and all the processes? Is it all done around uh, you know, all the processes that you have or is it only in a limited fashion? Or do you only do it for certain uh, processes or certain customers? Again, uh, an important question to ask. So maybe what you could do is map it out a little bit like this. Yeah, you can take this table and, and you know, uh, from those uh, descriptions, uh, those eight that I indicated, maybe put a tick in the box of where you are. Now, when you do that, you can see where you are and hopefully you're not at this level because this year is level one, yeah, is where you have almost no control. In my view, you basically run by luck, right? You hope that everything goes okay, but there are many risk areas. Level three, this is what most organizations, yeah, you know, by right must be doing. Anybody who runs a mission critical data center, this is the absolute minimum, really. Uh, uh, you could almost say this is roughly at the ISO level, uh, but there are things that you could do better. And this will be what we all aspire to, yet very hard to do. Um, so far, from what I recall, there are only two organizations in the world at this moment that has achieved this level of operational excellence. So uh, is it doable? Yes, it is, but it might require a bit of work depending on the current level of uh, the harmony you have in the organization uh, and the maturity levels of the various uh, processes. Now, just want to quickly run you through a quick uh, uh, case study. It's gonna be very brief. Um, as you know, there is uh, a uh, you know, number of processes, uh, domains, as we call them in the DCS, and uh, hopefully you still remember that there are a total of 11. So what we did for one customer, and uh, excuse me for the picture, because this was a customer in Latin America, so it's in Spanish, uh, but what we did for this particular customer, we did an overview where we assessed all the domains, so all 11, and you know, mapped it out between the desired state, in this case, uh, the level three indicated in blue on this chart, and where they actually were based on the audit that we executed uh, for them. So based on that, they said, you know what? Yes, we have a bunch of problems, but we can't fix them all because we don't have enough resources available uh, in terms of people, money, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to pick out the five domains that we believe will have the biggest business impact when we you know, fix them up to level three. So what they did, uh, they took all the individual parts, uh, in this case, for example, the security, they said, oh, clearly, you know, we have an issue there. There is one, this uh, Comdizencia Seguridad, so uh, security awareness, uh, as it's called in uh, English, uh, was totally out of control. There was just nothing done in the organization. And they said, okay, let's fix that particular part and bring it to where we want it to be. Same what they did uh, in uh, the uh, environmental sustainability. Um, basically, they were, it was non-existing in this organization, which was a great shock 
to the management because they thought uh, in their uh, board of directors that clearly a directive was given to be you know green and sustainable but the actual fact was that not much was being done in this particular area and again that is where their focus was and they lifted up to the desired level at level three so this is basically uh, how it uh, in the end uh, came out so they fixed all the various domains till they fully complied to level three and as a result they got a nice search on the wall uh, to show them that they have achieved it and this was actually quite nice because the people that worked there were really happy about you know being able to over time to achieve this and one of the commands was that with iso they sometimes lost the will to live because it was just too many things too much in, in a short period that needed to be fixed and dcs allowed them to progressively over time to make it better as I said, uh, we have a few organizations. This is one, uh, Codisa Data Center. This is uh, this was the first one who achieved a level five. So all the eleven domains fully, you know, implemented the operational procedures with an improvement cycle in there, and you know, fully integrated across all those eleven disciplines. Again, uh, really fantastic uh, how they did all that uh, stuff, and they used you know manual resources, uh, automation, etc. So it's a, it's a very interesting site. So as a summary, yeah, human error is a major contributor to the data center downtime. Yeah, I don't think there's any confusion about that. I just look in your own environment, you will see probably some examples there. Um, data center operations, yeah, we want it to be effective and efficient because that is really, really important for any data center, whether you are an enterprise data center or whether you are a commercial data center operator owner, uh, these are always two key things, right? Being effective and being efficient. This US, it's the only data center operation standard that addresses all the disciplines for data center governance, uh, operations, and maintenance. Uh, and as I said, it's specifically written for the data center environment. Therefore, it is you know widely adopted more and more. You know, we see the traction for the data center professionals following this. Yeah. The good news, as I said, uh, it's progressive, both in the scope and the maturity. So people typically don't feel overwhelmed by having to do so many things to achieve, you know, certain levels. You can do it as resources allow, and you know, uh, it is a certifiable standard, as you saw, um, and you know, it's getting more and more recognition in the market. Uh, I've seen in some cases where customers start demanding it from their data center operator owner. To have at least you know evidence of you know certain of the key domains to be under the management control so in the end it's all about trust right all right we as data center professionals we have a lot of you know weight on our shoulders because the business yeah and trust us that we take care of the applications that you know run the business and we need to make sure that it's effective and efficient running 24 by 7 in the most you know optimum way to give a good return on investment. So it's all about trust in the end. And you know, trust can be built, of course, by having the right infrastructure and processes in place. And with that, we've landed to the QA. Now I have to put on my glasses because I'm getting older. Thank you, Herbert. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, please uh, type them into the QA section. And uh, or raise your hand if you want to speak. Okay, let me check the questions. Uh, we have a few to start. Okay, um, okay but one of the question is, uh, since the DCOS has 11 domains, uh, what, what are the minimum domains recommended to start with? Um, the, the minimum domains, um, I would normally recommend uh, four domains to start with. Uh, the first one is always service level management because uh, in the end we need to understand our customers before we can you know, even serve them. So service level management is the, the key one. Very tightly linked to that one is the monitoring and control because obviously uh, for us to be able to uh, measure whether we are you know, fulfilling the requirements of the, of the service level management, you need to have proper monitoring and control. So that will be there. Um, facility maintenance, and operations management. So those I would say the key ones, so uh, service level management, monitoring, uh, uh, reporting and control, uh, facilities management and operations management. Uh, we do see 
that quite a few organizations also add uh, security management by pretty much by default. Um, and that comes back, especially with commercial data center operator owners, uh, pretty much all of them, um, they have already ISO 27001, which is the ISMS, the Information Security Management Standard. And uh, they say, since we have that certification already, we might as well do the DCOS uh, security management as well, because it's so closely tied with 27001. Yeah, so but as a bare minimum, uh, those four and ideally security management, if you have already certification anyway. Thanks, Everett. Uh, another question from the audience is, um, if I have a DCOS, do I still need the ISO certifications? Um, well, uh, yes and no, I guess. Um, in the end of the day, if you would have DCS fully in, uh, uh, implemented, theoretically, you know, you don't need ISO because everything is covered already. However, yeah, most people have ISO anyway. Uh, sometimes it's a market requirement. Yeah, if you are a data center operator owner in a commercial space, typically customers demand that you have ISO 9000 and 27001 and maybe even 20,000, etc. So it will be more commercially driven. Uh, but in most cases, I, if not all the cases, um, we always see that customers have a blend. So they have already some ISO certification and then start embarking on DCOS. But technically speaking, you know, let's say that you have a brand new data center. Uh, let's say that you don't care about ISO, there's no customer requirement. And if you would then for the only use DCOS, you would have a perfect you know, running data center with minimum risk uh, from a process management point of view. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Edward. Um, I have another question here. Do you have DCOS training? Um, yeah, yes and no, not, not specifically as DCOS training in itself, but we have two courses, uh, CDFOS and CDFOM, so Certified uh, Data Center uh, Operations Specialist and Certified Data Center Facilities Operations Manager. Uh, those two courses are uh, fully aligned with DCOS. So if you would like to implement DCOS, for example, then the CDFOS and the CDFOM will be, you know, the two courses uh, to look for uh, from that perspective. Good. Thanks, Edward. Um, there's a question. How can we have the presentation? Oh, yes, we will share the recording after the event with everyone that is already registered. Okay, there's another question. What is the difference between facility management and operations management? Okay, um, facility uh, management is more around uh, the whole arena of uh, say uh, uh, maintenance, right? How do you execute maintenance programs? How you schedule it, how you monitor it? Uh, how do you go about spare parts management uh, and all those matter? And of course it links into vendor, vendor management and service level management as well. So that is more on the, yeah, call it simply put behind the wall of a computer room, so to speak. So all the areas around maintenance. Uh, operations management is more about uh, what some people call floor management. So it's about capacity planning, uh, racking and stacking of, of, uh, of equipment, uh, decommissioning of equipment, etc. So the, the normal day-to-day -day, uh, operations that you know, typically happens uh, within the computer room, so to speak. Okay, thanks, Edward. Um, another question is, which maturity level matches the ISO certificates? Is it maturity level three? Yeah, that's, uh, that's correct. Yeah, if you look at, say, uh, ISO, uh, ISO is typically a process description, obviously. Um, that one is normally uh, uh, around the, uh, the level three. We would consider level three to be uh, at the... Uh, at the ISO, uh, ISO level, correct. That's a lot of questions. Okay, another one is uh, you mentioned that the first step is to read the DCOS standard. Is it readily available and where can it be accessed? Okay, uh, yes, it is available. There are two options. Uh, you can go to the epi-ap.com website. Um, there you can go to the DCOS section and you can basically read online the DCOS itself. Um, if you would like to have a PDF document, which some people prefer rather than reading it on the internet, uh, then you can, uh, you know, for a small fee, 
uh, get access to a, uh, a copy for yourself that will be then distributed to, to you. Great. Okay, next question is, sorry, one of, one of the downtime in DC is due to human error, but um, most people working in data centers are aware of the operations procedures. How can, what can we do to minimize human errors in data centers? Okay, well, um, no, uh, yes, sometimes there are procedures there. The question is, uh, are people following it? Sometimes due to business pressure, you know, we tend to skip certain things uh, because we, you know, have the boss on our neck and he says it needs to be installed uh, in the next two hours. And then we start, you know, forgetting about staging and we just plug it in and hope for the best, etc. Uh, just as a small example. So although... Uh, there might be process descriptions. Sometimes they are just not well organized uh, with all respect to some of you, but in some cases we see that the processes are just not adequately described. As I said, sometimes they're over-engineered and people just start skipping steps. Sometimes they are under-engineered so where critical checks and balances are not being done, uh, leaving the operations at risk. So it's a, it's a mix between non-appropriate uh, process descriptions uh, integration issues and sometimes where people just don't follow it because they're kind of in this routine. As I said, uh, in the airline industry, you have to follow the checklist. Uh, but we tend to do in the data center industry where you know we are not so well regulated uh, yet, maybe, um, is that people just you know say I've read the document, I keep doing it over and over again. They over time start you know skipping checks uh, because they just think they are not necessarily, and, and that's where then accidents could happen. Okay. Thanks for explaining that, Edward. Uh, another question is, can we implement DCOS ourselves? Yeah, you could. Yeah, uh, the document is, is very well uh, descri describing all the things that you should be implementing. So, yes, you could do it. Uh, although we all know from ourselves that, you know, if we look at what we do ourselves, we always tend to uh, be a little bit biased and think that we've done a great job. So, uh, although you could implement it yourself and plenty of people do, I think it's always a good idea to have, you know, some oversight of somebody from external to have a look at, say, have we done the right thing, right? Because again, uh, sometimes there might be uh, certain things that you implement where maybe the intent was slightly different in the DCOS to some extent. So uh, the short answer is yes. Would I recommend somebody to oversee, you know, from an external point of view to see whether you've done the right thing? I think that's highly recommended. Thank you, Edward. Another question. Is there uh, is the energy efficiency of uh, PUE considered in the DCOS? Uh, no, uh, because PUE is uh, kind of yeah. Uh, well, we talk about energy efficiency, so you know, in the in the standard itself, uh, we are um, saying that you need to look at sustainability and continuous improvement. So we are looking at you know uh, standards around it, uh, fourteen thousand, fifty thousand, etc., which has the you know the PUE embedded in it. Um, so it is it is part of the management process in that sense under environmental sustainability. But we don't tell you, for example, where to hook up your meter, uh, whether it has to be before the transformer or after the transformer. There are other documents in the market that describe that. But the whole process around uh, sustainability management, of which PUE is a, is one of the metrics, uh, is in the DCS. Thanks, Edward. Another question: Is the DCS applicable for enterprise data centers and, and yeah. or commercial data centers? Both, both, yeah, because both, you know, uh, organizations have to run uh, processes, right? So whether you do racking and stacking in a commercial data center or in an enterprise data center, there's still elements of risk in both. Um, how you execute it and who uh, puts the hand on the systems, for example, might be different in enterprise uh, because it's typically done by your own personnel. But uh, DCOS is applicable to any size of data center, whether it's small or big, whether it's critical or maybe not so critical. And, you know, whether it's a cloud data center or a commercial hosting site or an enterprise data, it, it's basically across the board. So it's very universal. Okay. We have a lot of questions. So I'm trying to pick um, which one to do next. Okay. If I understand well each discipline is aligned with an ISO standard is that correct 
Yeah, in general, yes. So where there are ISO standards available for a particular discipline, uh, let's, let's pick out the easy one, uh, say ISO 27001, right, is an uh, information security management standard. Um, so yes, uh, in our security uh, domain in DCUS, we have aligned, you know, the items with uh, ISO 27. If we're talking about general quality management systems, right, that's a universal thing that everybody does when we implement quality management controls, then yes, we are aligned to the ISO 9001, et cetera. So many aspects, uh, let's take another one, say in operations, we're talking about say, uh, ticket handling, right? If something goes wrong, you need to raise a ticket uh, for an incident, uh, problem management, change management. We have aligned that with 20,000, uh, for example. So yes, the standard is aligned. That's the beauty also that, like I said, when you have, for example, ISO already implemented, DCUS will not conflict with it. It will just enhance it. Yeah, that is the, the beauty. Thank you, Rich. Uh, another question. How how do we avoid or minimize hardware faults like EPS Gen said? EPI, does EPI recommend handling failure, failure of equipment? Yeah, um, in, yes, and uh, the, in the, there are various ways of how we deal with that, obviously, in terms of, say, maintenance procedures, yeah, how to go about it, you know, all the, the things around it, like, uh, you know, permit to work and all those procedures are described. Um, as I said, in the DCS, in the in the appendix, there is a very, very nice checklist that tells you all the things you need to check on various equipment, whether it's CCTV, whether it's a generator, whether it's a chiller, etc. So that serves as a good guidance. Obviously, it does not overrule uh, the recommendations uh, of the vendor, but, uh, you know, where applicable, you can use that uh, checklist. So the checklist plus the procedures that we describe in facility maintenance, etc., that would serve as a, as a very solid approach to your overall maintenance procedures. Thanks, Edward. Um, I think this question is pretty similar, but I'll just uh, put it to you. If I have outsourced my data center, is the DCOS still relevant? Yeah, it is. For example, uh, if you are an, uh, an enterprise customer and you have outsourced it, uh, your IT to a, a cloud provider or a commercial data center, um, I personally would like that particular vendor to guarantee me that you know their operational processes are running like clockwork, right? Because ultimately you put your trust in, in their disciplines and procedures. And it doesn't mean that they you know do a, a bad job or a good job. That is something that ultimately had yeah, the proof is in the pudding, as they will say. But to have some level of guarantee, uh, that is where standards come in. That's why a lot of people say. I trust my IT environment and my data to you. I would like you to show that you have security under control. Uh, and that is where people say, show me your 27001 ISO certificate. So for DCUS, uh, uh, since it's so specifically written for data center, I think personally it would be a good idea to ask the provider, say, hey, are you DCUS certified in, for example, this domain and this domain, because they are very critical uh, in, in my point of view. Thanks, Edward. Uh, one more question. Has the DCOS been introduced in Poland? Yes, yes, we have. Uh, there's an organization, I, I, I don't know them all. Uh, I know Atman uh, is an organization operator uh, in Poland that uh, was one of the first one, if not the first one, I think they were the first one actually, yeah, uh, to uh, implement DCOS. Um, they liked it, you know, uh, it was, uh, it was a, a nice uh, uh, track that we went through. Um, they learned a lot from it and they really saw the value. Uh, they had already ISO certifications, but when they implemented the DCUS, they saw clearly that, that you know, there are still quite a few gaps within ISO related to, uh, as I said, a data center environment. And it, uh, they were happy with all the enhancements they could do in the organization to, to bring the overall you know, efficiency and effectiveness up and ultimately uh, reduce the risk for their, for their uh, large customer base. Thanks, Edward. Uh, we have time for one last question. For those that we didn't manage to answer, we will get back to you uh, offline. So the last question is, is there any standard or guideline for dust controlling and cleaning for data centers, active equipment? Yeah, there is, uh, there is, uh, you know, there, okay, there are two parts. In the uh, DCS, we do talk about how to maintain your data center in the sense of you know the regular cleaning, right? Uh, making sure that uh, the uh, contamination is under control. Um, there is a standard called the ISO 14644 that is uh, a standard about air quality. 
uh, and the DCOS is relating to that one. Uh, so we talk about that you need to do regular, you know, air quality checks uh, and make sure that that is all within the ISO 14644 uh, limitations. Okay, thank you very much, Edward. Uh, we have come to the end of the webinar. Like I said, uh, the questions that we didn't manage to answer, we will reply you offline. And thank you for all the questions. Really interesting to see so many questions coming in. Uh, Edward, do you have any last words before we sign off? No, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll have a look at some of the questions that uh, were asked uh, offline, you know, that we can't answer now, then we can uh, answer them individually. Um, other than that, I would say, you know, thank you very much for your time. I hope you take the opportunity to uh, read the DCUS on our website. It's free uh, if you want to read it on the web itself. Um, just learn from it, you know, try to see whether you can enhance your data center operations or, uh, you know, uh, just review it from a best practices point of view and we hope that it was valuable this uh, this webinar and that we uh, have helped you to uh, make your data center a little bit better again so thank you so much and hopefully we'll see you soon again okay well again thank you and thank you for joining us uh, you can take away the information that Edward has shared today and use it in your own environment or with your data center provider it can reveal some pretty interesting information that uh, will definitely benefit you, your organization or your business. And lastly, do remember that uh, we are here for you. So if you need any assistance applying what we have gone through today, please uh, reach out to us. And thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you all. Stay safe.